Welcome to my new minimalism series. Today is gonna to be part one or episode one, which is gonna be tackling my MacBook. I don't know what to call this series. Digital declutter, Fritz digital decluttering, I, I don't know. <laughs> if you have any suggestions, write them in the comments below and hopefully you guys will come up with a way better title than what I've just spouted out. Hey guys, and welcome to this vlog where I start this digital decluttering series because it's well overdue for me. As you may have seen in previous vlogs, because of the type of work I do as a videographer and photographer, I have a lot of hard drives, my MacBook is just constantly full. If I'm really, really honest, since I bought my MacBook at the end of 2014, I basically haven't properly decluttered it. I've done a bit of surface decluttering, like sort of tidying up my desktop, and maybe every now and then I might delete a few things out of my downloads folder that I know shouldn't be there. But in general, I basically haven't decluttered my MacBook for about three years. And now it's getting to the point where I'm having problems when I'm exporting videos because there's just not enough storage space on my MacBook. And so it's starting to actually affect my daily life. So I've decided that I just can't put it off any longer so I've set myself a goal. I really want to be able to free up 500 gigabytes of space on my MacBook and that should be enough space to put one or two video or photography projects that I'm currently working on and also existing vlogging projects that I'm working on without having to work off portable hard drives like I'm currently doing. So since I haven't decluttered my MacBook since I bought it, today is going to be part one of doing that and that essentially is just a deep clean of my MacBook. Let me show you the state that it was in. Okay, so <laughs> this is my desktop. As you can see, it is awful. It's so full of stuff that basically I have all of these images up here that are just piled in a corner because there's no space left on my desktop to put them anywhere. So first things first, I'm just gonna tidy this up. At least that will be a small and quick win. I saved this one because I thought this was really funny that this is the difference between me and Casey Neistat. So when I uploaded my Get The Damn Shot video, in 48 minutes I had 11 views and in 46 minutes he had 98,568 views. I just thought that was really funny so I saved that but I'm gonna delete that now. Quick side note, I've been thinking a lot recently about cloud-based storage. In fact, someone wrote that in the comments um, a few months ago, and I've kind of been doing little bits of research here and there because I think it really is the way to go for me. I'm currently trialing Amazon Drive, which is a bit like Google Drive in terms of its format, but because I'm an Amazon Prime customer already, it makes sense for me to go with Amazon. So at the moment, what I've got is unlimited storage that I'm trialing for three months. That's unlimited for video, photo, documents, music files, anything that I wish to upload to the cloud, I can do. And after my three months is over, then I pay 55 pounds for the year to continue having that unlimited storage. And on top of that, I also get something called Prime Photos. As you can probably guess from the name, it comes with your Prime account if you're already signed up. And that again is unlimited storage. So I can upload all the photographs that I've taken there, create albums so that I can easily find them. But most importantly, I'm also able to upload raw files, which I found was a problem with something like Google Photos. It just didn't recognize the file and therefore didn't let me upload them. Despite all of those features that I've just listed off, I'm still not quite 100% about it. And I'll talk a bit more about that later. But for the time being, that's what I'm using. So that's why I have an Amazon Drive folder now on my desktop. Okay, so here we are. This is my absolutely empty desktop wallpaper, which I'm very, very happy about. It has not looked like this in a very, very long time. So this is looking great. Really enjoying how this looks. I've got a bit of momentum now, so um, <laughs> let's just tackle the rest of it. <laughs> But I'm just going to show you guys a couple of things first. Right now, I know that I have just over 100 gigabytes of space. Let me show you that. So in disk utility here, this is my available space here, and that comes to 112 gigabytes, just shy of 113. And this is how the rest of my space is used up. As you can see, about 61 gigabytes is for apps, over 300 gigabytes for photos, tiny bit, 10 gigabytes for audio, 152 gigabytes for movies and then other. So in order to dissect this further, I'm going to show you a bit of software called Disk Inventory X. 
disk inventory X here. Okay, and if we open this up, essentially this is now just scanning every file that is on my computer. And then it will list in order of size from the largest file to the smallest file so that I can then quickly go into those and delete them if I find that I don't need them and just keep this momentum going so that I can free up as much space on my computer as possible. So I went through as many files as I could through Disk Inventory X to get rid of a lot of large files that I didn't need anymore. That included my applications for any software that I wasn't using anymore but was just still installed on my MacBook. And then there was my Downloads folder. The Downloads folder, I think, is probably one of the easiest places where you can just store things really unintentionally and you kind of just forget. And over time, a lot of that storage space can get used up really quickly because we're just downloading things online and it all gets stored there. Most of which we probably actually don't need anymore because it's kind of served its purpose. I was 100% completely guilty of this. So I went through every single file in that folder. I moved some of the files that I wanted to keep into my Amazon Drive folder and everything else just went into my trash can. Then it was time for my documents folder. And again, I deleted stuff that I didn't need. I moved anything that I wanted to keep to my Amazon Drive folder, and I managed to get it down to this. These files here are essentially just the screencasts that I'm creating right now. Um, they're being saved in my documents folder. They're all going to be moved, so they're not gonna stay there forever. But yeah, on my desktop, just got Amazon Drive. On my downloads, that's completely empty. Um, just got my applications. And that's essentially it. Yeah, that, I think, is pretty good progress. Now what I need to do is go through this Amazon Drive folder and go through all of the files in there, all of the photos. <sighs> Let's do it. So I managed to get my Amazon Drive folder to look like this. And this is what it looks like on Amazon Drive itself which is much tidier than before. In total, I've only uploaded about seven gigabytes of stuff. That's not including my photos, by the way. <laughs> they still need a bit of time to go through. And just to be clear, this is only all of my personal stuff. None of my work-related stuff is going onto Amazon Drive because Amazon has a clause in its terms that stipulates that you're not allowed to use Amazon Drive for commercial purposes. So I've just kept all of my work stuff away from there. I'm gonna have to find a new platform where I can upload all of my footage files and documents and things like that. If anyone has any suggestions, write them in the comments below and I'll definitely be investigating that in a future video. Now, the next step, unfortunately, is the biggest task, which is to go through all of my photos in that photos folder and get them down to only ones that bring me joy. I've actually already started doing this. I was up late last night just going through thousands and thousands of photographs and when I did a really quick toss up of how many pictures I'd have to go through, it came to just shy of 19,000 photographs. Bearing in mind, this is still just my personal photographs. This isn't even my work stuff. I just love taking photographs. So anyway, that's gonna take me quite a long time and I will spare you guys from having to watch that. What I'll then do is I'll upload all the ones that I've kept to Prime Photos, I'll create photo albums, and that will mean that every photograph has a category and is easy to find and also means that I get to enjoy them more rather than just having them sat on my MacBook never being looked at. Hopefully, if I can complete that, then that will be in next week's video. So that's it. In this video, I managed to free up about 140 gigabytes of space, which is awesome because it means that I only need to free up another 150 gigabytes in order to hit my 500 gigabyte target, which I think should be easy enough to do. My photos take up so much space, and so once I pare those down, upload them to Prime Photos, I should be able to free up a hell of a lot of space and maybe even exceed that 500 gigabyte target. I previously mentioned that I wasn't quite sure about choosing Amazon and the reasons for that are firstly its layout and functionalities are still a little bit primitive and secondly they're a bit uncertain in their packaging for example here in the UK as I mentioned I'm on an unlimited storage plan but in the US that doesn't exist they don't do that anymore they only offer a 100 gigabyte plan and a one terabyte plus package so despite the fact that it's awesome that here in the uk we've still got the unlimited storage does that mean that we're going to lose it anytime soon i don't know but essentially in a nutshell if you're already a prime customer then you're already eligible to give amazon drive and prime photos a go so maybe sign up give it a go and see if it works for you if you're not a prime customer and you're interested in becoming one i've put all the necessary links down below in the description if you'd like to sign up. 
And if you're not a Prime customer and you don't want to be one, then in the US, you do have the option to still use Amazon Drive because they give you five gigabytes for free. Here in the UK, we don't have that. But to be honest, no matter which country you live in, I would probably say that the best free storage right now is from Google Drive because they give you 15 gigabytes of space. But you know, I'm still at the very start of researching about this, but I really think that cloud-based is the way to go because it ties in with a lot of values for me in terms of being more intentional about where I'm storing my stuff and also keeping my MacBook as clear as possible for it to work as well as possible. So if you have any tips or suggestions about cloud-based storage, then write them in the comments below. I'd really, really love to read them. In the meantime, if you've been thinking about it, why not join me in a digital declutter? Clear out your computer or your laptop or even your tablet or your phone and get in touch and tell me all about it. You can write me a comment down below or get in touch with me on Twitter or Instagram. When I opened my MacBook this morning and I saw my desktop all beautiful and clean and empty and I knew all the files that I've kept locally on my MacBook, that brought me this huge sense of satisfaction but also a really great sense of calm. So I know that all of this is so worth it but it's just so painful <laughs> and knowing that maybe a few of you guys are coming along on this journey with me would be amazing and all that's left to say as always is thank you so much for watching give us a thumbs up if you like this video hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and i will see you guys with a new digital decluttering video next week okay bye